So it's been a while since I've talked about the Blackmagic camera app, and just last night they came out with their 3.2 update. So what's new in 3.2 from last night? If we go into our settings, about halfway down we will see live streaming. Now, there's a big caveat here of iPhone 17s versus 16s, at least issues I'm having, so bear that in mind for a moment. But in terms of how it should work, the setup is stupid simple. So when you go here, uh, you'll notice first, if you try to turn on live stream, it won't work. And then all the other uh, different listings of platform server key quality look great out, but you can tap on them because you actually need to input that first before you can turn on the live stream. So the user interface could use some tweaking with um, like opacity of the text because I think a lot of people think that it's off by default. But anyway, you can pick your platform. You can see Blackmagic Cloud, YouTube, Twitch, Vimeo. YouTube's obviously the main platform that I would be going live on. Um, and then server area was set to primary. I'm sure that's fine, but in my testing, I've just been trying automatic to see if it needs to switch. You will then go to your YouTube account, like on your desktop in YouTube Studio, and you will see if you hit go live on uh, there, it will give you your stream key. This you don't want to share with anyone else, which is why mine is hidden currently. Um, but you'll want to then just copy and paste that over to here. And then you can set your streaming quality from high to low, depending on what sort of connection you have. And that's it. Now, that's it, I think is a good and a bad thing. So if I turn on live stream right now, you will then see it go back to my regular camera feed. And at the top, you'll see on air. And in the bottom right hand corner, you'll see your live stream counter go up in terms of duration. And then we should be seeing data rate basically going up how much data it's taking from your uh, or for your live stream to be uploaded, right. But this is where I got stuck. And I've spent the last couple of this video would have been live already, I'm sure a couple hours ago, but I spent a couple hours being like, okay, why is it not actually going live? Is there something more? I was opening up OBS. I was looking at the YouTube live page, which if you're using something like OBS will pop up and you'll see like a live feed of on air. But then I learned that it, uh, it's just another iPhone 17 issue. There's, there's so many black magic camera app, iPhone 17 specific bugs. And so finally I'm like, Hmm, is this just an iPhone 17 bug? So then I pick up my iPhone 16, which is also updated to 3.2. I can see all the live stream. I input the same stuff, uh, except I kept server on primary because I just didn't change that. And then I hit live stream again. It goes back on air. And now I can see an actual data rate popping up. And if you're watching this on my channel right now, it should be going live. I can literally see the stream on my computer. My thing is horrible here. Let me auto adjust this. Uh, and so now it just works. <laughs> and now some of you are going to be confused because you're going to see this live stream and then you're going to see the video pop up. Th this is great. It's stupid simple. Like I said, to live stream, the only downside is there's no way to input the actual live stream info. So what I had to do when I first successfully did this test, like 10 of you would have seen this uh, that joined that first live is the last time I did a live was for the iPhone 13, like unboxing or wish list. And so that popped up with the old thumbnail from many years ago. And so all of that stuff you'll have to change inside YouTube studio on the computer. Um, you're not able to set up any of the live stream sort of information on the phone. Anyone who's live right now, I'm literally recording the video you're going to see in a couple hours. This live streams about to end. Hey, CJ. Uh, yeah, I'm live streaming from the mobile app. It's the, the new feature. And then you just go back in the app and you just turn it off and that ends the stream. But also if you leave the app, that will pause the stream as well once the app starts going in the background. So yeah, the interesting part to me is the, the feature that they definitely need to add in the next iteration is literally just like title of stream and you know even thumbnail, like I made it a generic thumbnail, but I had to save that stuff so that way it popped up as 
Blackmagic Camera App 3.2 testing, um, and I changed the thumbnail from the iPhone 13, whatever it was. And so if I go live again, say tomorrow, it will use the last saved settings from my live kind of default settings, I guess, or the last live stream. I would love to test things out in terms of if you are live streaming from, I feel like a lot of you are gonna ask, so we're gonna try it. Let me go on my iPad. We're gonna go to live stream, change this to YouTube. So now we have our live stream information set up. I'm gonna go into our camera control. Uh, this we're gonna use as controller. All right, so I got my 16 and 17. So we can see our different, our three different camera views here. Now it would be epic if I could then turn on live stream and be able to camera control different angles. Live stream. So that's not a feature as of currently. And when I turned on live stream on the phones, it seemed to turn off camera control. So it doesn't look like you're able to do both. So no multi-cam live streaming straight from the mobile devices just yet, but I'm happy we tested it out. We at least have the answer. So yeah, if you guys figure out any more interesting facts about the live streaming features, let me know down in the comments below. Yeah, super cool that it's integrated. I definitely think adding title and figuring out something with the thumbnail so that you don't have to like update streaming stuff first in YouTube studio and doing that whole thing, um, make it a little bit more like, you know, going live on Instagram or something by just entering some basic info. That would be great. But yeah, always happy to see updates to the Blackmagic camera app. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.